Okay, <coughs> we're going to talk about uh, something called the expected value of a random variable. And this is like the average uh, for a set of data. Now we're going to develop, basically it's the average for a random variable, or the mean. So we know the formula for the arithmetic, arithmetic mean, or average, of uh, a set of numbers. So here we have x1, x2, up to xn, and the average is just the add those up and divide by the number of numbers that you have, so n. And that's denoted by x bar. For example, if we have this, we add them up, we divide by 10 because there's 10 numbers here, that's called x bar, and it turns out to equal 77.5. They say, note that the average doesn't average value does not have to equal any of the given values. So 77.5 is not equal to any of these, but it's still called the average. Then they rec they uh, uh, notice that <coughs> there are repetitions in this set of scores. So 65 occurs here, and also occurs here, and also occurs here. So 65 occurs three times. 70 appears twice, 80 appears once, 90 appears four times. So instead of writing it this way, I could write 3 times 65, and then 72 times 70, 1 times 80, and 4 times 90 over 10. Still, of course, we get the same thing. And of course, instead of writing it that way, I could write 3 over 10 times 65, 2 over 10, times 70, 1 over 10, times 80, and so on. So I could write it like this. And then notice that this is the relative frequency of 65, 3 out of 10 times. This is the relative frequency of 70, relative frequency of 80, relative frequency of 90. So they say to formalize this idea, if x1 in our data set occurs f1 times, and x2 occurs f2 times, and xt occurs ft times, then uh, we can write that the average is like this, of course, f1 times x1, f2 times x2, and so on. And we can also write it like this, where n is the total number of values being averaged. We also note that if we add up all these frequencies, these are the frequencies of all the elements in the set, in the data, then uh, we should get n. And uh, f1, f2, ft are called the frequencies of x1, x2, xt. And these ratios are called the relative frequencies. They say we can also build, make a table like this. 65 occurred 3 times, 72 times, 81 times, 94 times total should be 10. And this table is called a frequency table for the test scores that we were given before. We didn't say that those scores were test scores, but we'll say it now. So uh, here's an example. Suppose the Bureau of Census surveys a group of married couples and records the data shown here concerning the number of children born to them. Find the average number of children born. So we get 50 couples had no children, 107 had one, 201 had two, 102 had three, da, 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 all the way up to this couple that had nine. The total here, since they surveyed, um, well they didn't say, but apparently they surveyed 500 people, so the total is 500 there. So x bar is 50 over 500 times 0 because the frequency of, uh, of the 0 was 50, so it's 50 over 500. 107 was the number of families with one child, so that's the relative frequency is 107 over 500, and so on. And we sum that all up. We do this to all these calculations. We get the average number of children was 2.002. Okay, so let's uh, kind of extend this idea to a random variable. 
So they say, now suppose that, a, that x is a discrete random variable. Now we talked about the difference between discrete and continuous. And I'll say it here. I don't think I said it in earlier videos, but um, if you think about the, remember, a random variable is a function from the sample space to a set of numbers. And if the set of numbers that it, um, the range of this function, the set of numbers that it hits is a discrete set, then x is a discrete random variable. If the set of numbers is a continuous set, set of numbers that it hits, or the, the range, uh, is a continuous set, then the x is called a continuous random variable. So it's, it's the range of the random variable. It's the set of numbers that it gets mapped to that determines whether x would be called discrete or random. Anyway, suppose now that x is a discrete random variable associated with a certain experiment. If we perform the experiment repeatedly n times, we will observe n values of x. So like I guess in the example above, we would say uh, the experiment was giving the test, and we're repeating it uh, a number of times. Or the experiment is um, pulling a family out of a, the name of a family out of a hat, and then um, checking how many children they have and repeating that over and over again. <coughs> if we were repeating it 500 times in the last example. If we perform the experiment repeatedly n times, we will observe n values of x. We might ask if it is possible to predict the arithmetic mean of these n values. Obviously, it is impossible to predict the mean exactly since the values of x obtained in one group of n repetitions need not be the same as the values obtained in another group of n repetitions. For example, if we toss a die three times and obtain the number 663, whose arithmetic mean... So remember, we can consider this uh, tossing a die as um, a random variable so that um, we... Uh, the set is the set, uh, the set of the range of the random variable is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's a discrete random variable. And you might ask, what's the um, sample space? You might say the sample space are the actual faces of the die. So not the number of dots, but the actual faces. So you can like phys imagine the physical faces. So there's one face, there's another face, there's six faces. Okay, and then we could say x goes from there to a set of numbers, and um, the set of numbers would be the numbers 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and of course, if the face showed one dot, then that, that would be mapped to the number 1, and if the face showed four dots, then that would be mapped to the number 4, of course. So, anyway, going back to this... Um, for example, if we toss a die three times and obtain the number 663, whose arithmetic mean is, of course, 5, it's conceivable that the next three tosses we might get these numbers, whose mean is 2. Nevertheless, it is possible to make a reasonable guess about the mean of n observed values of x when the number n is large. To see why, consider a finite discrete random variable again, finite discrete random variable, as opposed to a continuous random variable, um, whose only possible values are x1, x2, and x3. So a very simple random variable. Also assume these values occur with known probabilities p1, p2, and p3. Suppose after n repetitions of the experiment, x1 occurs f1 times, x2 occurs f2 times, and x3 occurs f3 times. So if we know that these, this is what actually happened, then of course we can calculate the mean as f1 over n, x1, and so on, as we did just before. And these are, but then we notice that this, of course, is the relative frequency of x1. This is the relative frequency of x2, and this is the relative frequency of x3. 
But we also know something about these, and that is that as n gets larger, these relative frequencies should begin to approach the, the probabilities, p1, p2, and p3. So they say, that is, when n is large, the approximations f1 over n is approximately p1, and these get better and better, and it should be good. Thus, from 7, we obtain the following approximation to x bar. So instead of using this, we'll use p1. Instead of using this, we'll use p2. Instead of using this, we'll use p3. So we get this. So x bar is approximately this. For the, uh, we now remember, we just did this n times, but and this is just an approximation to the actual value, which was this. Now, instead of just limiting ourselves to three possible outcomes, x1, x2, x3, we'll allow ourselves to have um, k possible outcomes. So more generally, if x is a finite discrete random variable whose values are x1 through xk, and if these values occur with probabilities, not relative frequency, because that's, that's supposing we actually did the experiment or repeated the experiment many times, but no. Just we know that the probabilities are this, this, and so on for x1 and so on, xk. Then when n is large, the so now we're talking about when n is large. So if we actually do it many times, the arithmetic mean of the n observed values will be approximately this. Okay, let's look at an example of this. So an experiment consists of tossing a fair die and observing the number x shown on the top face. Okay, so x is a random variable from the actual faces to the numbers 1 through 6. Use the approximation in 8, use this, to estimate the arithmetic mean of the observed values if the experiment is repeated many times. So if we repeat it many times, we're going to get f1 over n, f2 over n, but we're going to approximate those with this, this, and this, or actually we're going to have five, uh, six values, so we're going to have to have six. But anyway, like, just like that. So here we have the six values, and of course all the probabilities will be the same. So we'll get this, that is one six times two, one six times two, one six, I'm sorry, one six, that's a mistake. Should be one six times one, one six times two, one six times three, so th this should be a one. Um, is going to be, so this is going to be the approximation of the actual x bar that if we did it many times, and the approximation will be 3.5. Okay? So this is, this gives us the idea of expected value. The expected value is what we just did. We just did this. We just took p1 times the x1, um, where p1, remember, is an approximation of the relative frequency, but we're, we're just using p1 here. p2 times x2, so this is the probability of x2 times x2, and all the way up to xk, and the probability of xk. And that's called the expected value. And it's like the average for the random variable. So let's read this again. Expected value. If the values x1 through xk of a finite discrete random variable x occur with these probabilities, then the expected value of this random variable x, denoted by this, is defined to be this, is this, this thing that we've just been talking about. In other words, the expected value of x is the sum it's a sum, sum, of the possible values of x, the possible values of x, x1, x2, xk, times their probabilities of occurrence. Their probabilities, not their relative frequency, but their probabilities. The expected value of x is also called the mean of x, or the expectation of x. <coughs> it is also denoted by this, so instead of <coughs> this one, you can also use this one. 
Okay, mu sub x, or sometimes just mu, when the random variable involved is evident. So I might just use the uh, mu instead of mu sub x, but usually I prefer to have the x there. So example three, if x is the number showing in the top face when a fair die is tossed, so x is just the number of dots on the top on the f showing face, when a fair die is tossed, then as shown in example two, the expected value of x, which can be, which is written like this, can also be written like this. We showed that that was 3.5. That is, we did this calculation just above here um, when we did the probability. Uh, this should be a one. Uh, of 1 times 1, the probability of 2 times 2, the probability of 3 times 3, and so on. And that turns out to be 3.5. So that's called the expected value of this uh, random variable, where this random variable is the number of dots on the sh top face. Okay, let's try another example. Oh, sorry, this example shows that the expected value, x, need not be a possible value of x. So you can't get 3.5 dots, but the expected value is still 3.5. Okay? In example 7 of section 9.1, we consider a random variable x denoting the number of defective resistors in a sample of two resistors from a production process in which 5% of all the resistors are defective. So x was the number of defective in a two sample, I'm sorry, in a two resistor sample. And that's when we're when there's a production process in which five percent of all the resistors are defective. Find the expected value of x. So x is the number of defectives. So um, how many should we expect to have in a sample of two is what we're asking. So since the expected value of a finite discrete random variable is the sum of the values of the random variable, so it's the so what can x be in this case? What are the values that x can take on in this case? Well, x again denotes the number of defective resistors in a two sample, I'm sorry, in a two resistor sample. So if you only have two resistors in your sample, how many uh what can x be? If x is the number of defective, you can only have you can have zero defective, you can have one defective, or you can have two defective. So those are the only values that this random variable can take. So it can only take on the value zero, the value one, and the value two. And then we ma multiply these by their probabilities, which we did in the earlier example. And in the earlier example, we showed that the probability of having no defective was very high the probability of having one defective was low, and the probability of having two defective was much lower. So this will be the calculation that gives you the expected number. Remember, x is the number of defective, so this is the expected number of defective when you have a sample of two. So you only expect to have 10%, uh, or the, exp the expected value is only 0.1. This can also be written like this, and it can also be written just like this. To summarize, the expected value uh, e, of, e of x of a finite discrete random variable x is the long-term average value of x when the experiment is repeated many times. So we saw the experiment is repeated many times means the die was tossed many times, or this, in this case, we're taking many, many samples of uh, size 2, or of 2 resistors, and counting the number of defective. So most of those samples will have no defective, and that's why the long-term average is only going to be 0.1. Okay? However, even when an experiment is performed once, the expected value can be of importance especially if a decision has to be made involving two or more choices of action. So the next example is a really good example for this. 
and I'll stop the video here and, and uh, continue in the next video.